Hey guys, let's start with new chapter of Loyal Pen Volume 2, Chapter 47. Please. For Pelantita, the night was as long as walking on an endless dark path, especially when she couldn't close her eyes to sleep. The pitch black way seemed to circle until the destination was hardly seen. So, she's accustomed to waiting for the first light to appear on the horizon like waiting for the arrival of a close friend. Pelantita made it through last night with incredible difficulty. Regarding to the conversation filled with the sweet, pleading voices between Princess Anil and Chongfa in yesterday evening, she still swirled around in her head without giving up. Lady Pen tried to find some words between the two that would make her feel at ease. On the contrary, she couldn't find even a half word. Palantita could only lie curled up on the cold, wrinkled mattress, letting her tears fall, and wet the pillow before it slowly dried up and became soaked again, repeating the cycle that for most of the night. Lady Pen was delighted when the first light penetrated through the white curtains and onto her body that had been lying motionless. Her long wait has finally ended. Palantita slowly raised her body to receive the morning sun longingly. The first thing she did was walk over to her favourite window, where she could easily see the Pine Palace. She slowly opened the window that had become so heavy in the time of distance, as if she were a distant person in between her and Princess Anil. The soft yellow light from the balcony indicated that Princess Anil was still residing at the Pine Palace. Unfortunately, this time, there was a high possibility that she wouldn't be alone. The sound of the car door opening and closing filled her ears last night, which made Pilantita very confident that the invitation of Chongfa to stay overnight at Princess Anil's Pine Palace wasn't a joke or a pretense. Palantita stared at the indigo-coloured balcony that was softly lit by the lights with a vacant look in her eyes. Thinking back to the time almost two years ago when she secretly watched Princess Anil sitting on a long chair through this window one early morning at the end of the rainy winter, not long after her first kiss passed. First kiss and first love. It is the only love that Lady Pilantita could have. Thinking of this, it turned out that the Pilantita's heart fluttered until she had to raise her hand to hold the left side of her chest in oblivion. How could she become someone who threw away her only love so carelessly? What a shame! Once again, Pilantita let out all her feelings and thoughts in an old journal that recorded both good and bad. It's like a close friend who always listens to her without arguing. Even after this notebook has become blurry, with teardrops that fall and stain the text to the point where it's almost impossible to read the words. Lady Pen intended to let the time pass until late in the morning before taking a shower and getting dressed. She went down to get breakfast with her auntie as usual after she no longer had the duty of taking care of Princess Anil's meal. How had she been coy before? After the engagement ceremony, Palantita became even coyter than before. Still, Princess Padmika did not blame Lady Pin for this matter because she felt guilty for forcing her niece on a case that could be said to have broken Lady Pin's heart. Meanwhile, Lady Palantita, wishes to live without hope, just enough to get through the day. So, why waste time talking to anyone? Ultimately, breakfast passed without any conversation. Palantita waited for this moment, the time when auntie would go to observe works in the kitchen, as usual, with eagerness, and when the time comes, unable to restrain herself, Pelantita walked secretly into the Pine Palace. It can't be luck. When Pelantita walked into the Pine Palace reception hall, 
her eyes met perfectly with Chong Fa's light brown eyes, who had just walked out from Princess Anil's bedroom. Oh, hello, Kunpin. Chong Fa, dressed in a long, beautiful, light purple dress, greeted, breaking the awkward silence between her and Palantita first. I'm just about to return to the front palace. Yes, Palantita replied. Palantita accepted the word in a dull voice. Her eyes seemed to glance at Chong Fa's body outside her clothes, observing until Chong Fa had to look along herself carefully before spreading a sweet smile to Palantita, not knowing what else to do. I am uh, leaving. I asked the car to wait for me for a while now. Yes, Palantita replied. Sister is getting dressed in her room. Palantita raised her tiny face, high and arrogantly, responded to Chong Fa's conversation. Even though her heart filled with questions about why Chong Fa could enter and leave the bedroom at the same time, Princess Anil was still getting dressed like that. Palantita could only pray in her heart that the story wouldn't go in the direction of the beautiful Chong Fa helping to dress Princess Anil. Yes, Palantita replied. Chong Fa smiled at the corner of her mouth in response to Lady Palantita's short conversation before walking out of the palace through the front door without looking at Lady Pin at all. Khun Pin narrowed her eyes and followed Chong Fa's delicate back until she was out of her sight. Then, she slowly walked to stand still in front of Princess Anil's very familiar bedroom door. She stared at the large door, which at this time was too heavy for her to stay silent for a long time. Palantita breathed deeply into her lungs before opening the door slowly, without knocking first as usual. Inside there, the first thing that struck Palantita's heart was the aroma of the bedroom which filled with expensive perfumes and cosmetics belonging to the owner of the room that she was familiar with. Next was the look in the prince's eye through a large mirror on the mirror table. Princess Anil, in a navy blue skirt, is wearing a diamond encrusted emerald necklace that matches the set that Princess Alessa gave to Lady Pilantita at the gift-giving ceremony. Palantita's eyes contracted Princess Anil's dark eyes like that for a long time until Princess Anil had finished wearing the emerald necklace. Her first words came so unexpectedly. So, Kunpin managed to get here. Do you have any business with me? Palantita couldn't help but recall her anguish at Princess Anil's first statement to her for the first time in several weeks. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, Palantita was at a loss for words. I just wanted to know what you said last night in the early evening that you were feeling unwell. Uh, do you feel better now? Princess Anil didn't immediately answer her question, but kept her eyes fixed on Palantita's small, lean face with concern. If you don't count a heart that breaking into pieces, it's consider that I'm fine. Hearing Princess Anil speak like that, Palantita suddenly felt pain, like dozens of sharp knives stabbed simultaneously in one place. The position of her heart. Anil surely knows, right? Palantita's voice was trembling. What kind of words can cause me to suffer so much, huh? I think I used to know. Nevertheless, at this time, I don't. Sometimes, you choose to make decisions in directions that I never predicted. Princess Anil spoke, turning to face Palantita directly, no longer speaking through her mirror. Sometimes, I don't have that many choices, Anil. Palantita raised her hand and squeezed her thin shoulder before bowing her back, looking fragile like a sick person. Her brown eyes were filled with clear water droplets. Then, why did you choose a path that would cause us so much pain, Kunpin? 
Prince Susanil stood up gracefully before slowly stepping towards Belantata. How beautiful and precious Anil is. I wish that you are still as beautiful as you are. Ah, <sighs> the outside is still beautiful. Prince Susanil moved her face closer to Lady Belantata's face. which was now as hot as if she had caught a fever inside it was hollow and empty belantata's eyes widened and looked up into princess anel's cold eyes as if wanting to make a request anel please belantata's thin shoulders trembled can you please not talk to me like this why can't i huh Anil without you alone my life is completely meaningless nevertheless if you lack your royal status you wouldn't be able to be like you were before i just don't want to take away anything anil has at this time belantata raised her eyes and looked at princess anil with a look of determination in her eyes i never agreed that you must sacrifice yourself to that extent <sighs> Princess Anal shook her shoulder with an ignored gesture. I would rather sacrifice myself than have to sacrifice Lady Pelantita to anyone. Even now, Kunpin, are you still confident? Princess Anal punctuated the conversation with extreme restraint. What you choose is the best. Tell me. At this point, Anal. At this point, I realize. I realized that I made the wrong choice. I was a foolish woman who fell into a deep pit of pain. I choose a path that I can't endure, can't afford. How can I endure this? Just when I heard that you started giving importance to other people more than me, I was almost suffocating to death today or tomorrow. This does not include your statement that You may have accepted the invitation of Chongfa, who invited Anil to stay at Chongfa Palace. When I heard that, I, I almost went crazy, Anil. At this point, Lady Pelantita slowly stretched out her hand and embraced Princess Anil's delicate body tightly. Lady Pelantita buried her tear-soaked face in Princess Anil's chest longingly. Until now. I still don't want anyone to be by your side more than me and I felt disgusted with myself every time I had to stand beside Kunkua and and I didn't like it at all when Chong Fa invited you to stay over in Chiang Mai I just want to know that Anil is here whether it is Pine Palace or the Front Palace I could breathe a hundred times more easily than knowing you were staying at Chao Fa Palace Can you please not accept the invitation to stay at the Chowfa Palace alone? Please. Ha, <sighs> Kunpin. So, if I just want to escape to the end of the sky, so I don't have to meet you stay with Kunkua. Princess Anil said in a low voice and stood still in the embrace of Lady Pelantata. She didn't push away. Nevertheless, she didn't embrace the body in her arms in any way. I I I I Lady Pelantita was at a loss for words to use to argue with Princess Anil's statement about Lord Guaket at this time she suddenly thought that she hated the young man's face more than she ever hated him why do you have to marry and bring Kunkua to stay in this palace isn't this considered too hurtful to my feelings It's Auntie's wish. Pelantita tightened her embrace towards Princess Anil even tighter before confessing in a weak voice. And it is my wish that I still want to see your face like before. Princess Anil swallowed her sticky saliva down her throat with difficulty. I never thought anything of Kunkua. I will only marry him as a status Anil. please believe in me i'll never allow him to be my owner i was born only to belong to you hearing this 
Princess Anil raised her beautiful face high with restraint. The pain she felt seemed like it was attacking her without any time to prepare herself. She had a question about what exactly Lady Pilantita was thinking. Why did she impose the role of a secret lover on her as if Pilantita was not aware of this? Then, I won't go to the Chaufa Palace anymore. Do you mean it? Just a few sentences from Princess Anil made Lady Pin's heart feel refreshed like flowers receiving rain. I do. Princess Anil spoke as she narrowed her eyes and looked at the young woman in her chest numbly. But I will go to study in England and will never come back here again. Pilantita heard this but collapsed powerlessly at the feet of Princess Anil. The young woman began to sob as she reached out and wrapped her arms around Princess Anil's leg, looking like a headless person. Anil? Anil, please, please, Anil. Lady Pen said, raising her eyes to meet Princess Anil's eyes in a very pleading manner. Anil, can you please don't speak like that? You had already promised me that you would never leave me again. Princess Anil still stood, staring blankly at Lady Pin, who was hugging her legs tightly. Please, please, Anil, can you not do this to me? Lady Pin's body was trembling at the sea of tears rained down without stopping. Princess Anil slid her body down to sit on the room floor. Her two hands gently touched Pilantita's thin shoulders, picked up her handkerchief and wiped the tears of the young woman in front of her in a gentle and sweet gesture before lifting Pilantita's round chin to meet her own eyes, remaining still. Kunpin, please go back. The voice was so cold and dull that Pilantita could hardly believe her ears. Anil? Lantita shook her head stubbornly before the tears that had dried fell again. Please, Kunpin, please go back. Because I hardly want to see your face, even for one second. That's it for this chapter, guys. And uh, I'll see you next with chapter 48 pretty soon. And thanks for all the love and support you're giving me. Thank you so much.